in this video I'm going to talk about copper absorption and we'll actually see that there is uh, a bit of crossover with the iron absorption here and in fact in this first figure here we can see that this DMT1 this divalent metal transporter that we saw in the iron absorption is also able to import uh, copper in the well it's divalent metal transporter so it can import uh, copper 2 plus uh, and we will also see so here this figure just shows this is a reductase this is from uh, an older paper so they hadn't identified the reductase yet but in fact it ends up being our old friend this uh, this duodenal cytochrome B here uh, as well as other re uh, uh, reduction uh, proteins there and so this is going from the copper 2 plus to the copper plus here and so that is then being uh, brought into these endosomes so it binds to the uh, to this CTR1 which is sort of the protein that we're going to be looking at here since we already looked at the DMT1 and so forth in the video on iron absorption and so that then uh, causes it to uh, sort of fold in and make these endosomes and then the copper can be released here and then there are it's like this atox one the ccs and the sod one which are just chaperone proteins uh, and so some of these will bring it to this mt which uh the MT is this metallothionine, uh, metallothionine right here, and so that can actually store copper here in in the cell. Uh, this Atox one brings it to the Trans Golgi network, uh, where it's uh, brought into the Golgi apparatus here, uh, where there is these ATP seven A. Uh, proteins which we'll look at in a little bit more detail here in a few minutes uh, so from the Golgi apparatus this can then go and fuse with the basal lateral membrane and then it can actually uh, send the copper here into the bloodstream so uh, it's the copper plus here then that can become copper 2 plus it binds to this albumin and then can be transported uh, throughout the blood all right, so this is looking at sort of uh, the difference between the CTR1, which is just the uh, copper transport receptor here, and the uh, divalent metal transporter here. And so what we see is that as copper, the concentration of copper goes up, the CTR1, uh, the CTR1 protein in uh, uh, protein concentration actually reduces and the DMT1 actually increases. Uh, and so this paper said that it uh, is sort of a compensatory mechanism uh, where when you have this sort of high copper concentration, uh, the CTR1 is going to downregulate because we don't want too much copper. Just like with the iron, the copper can become toxic if you have too much of it. Uh, and so your intestine, your enterocytes are going to downregulate this this protein that brings in the copper uh, if there is too much of it. And so if we look at the CTR1 here, so uh, this is the protein that brings in the copper and it has this uh, C terminal domain here that have these motifs on it. So these these histidine rich motifs as well as these methionine rich motifs and those are actually important for the uh, CTR1 to actually uh, uh, be brought into the cell in these endosomes like this. Uh, so what we actually see, so we have the, this with copper 2 and copper 1 treatment in wild type here, we see that 
we generate these endosomes here, whether we have copper two or copper one, whereas this uh, deletion of M1, so M1 being this methionine motif here. So if that's deleted, we see that in copper two, we now do not have this get brought in, but with copper one, it still gets brought in. Uh, and then we have the double deletion here, uh, which uh, causes both of these not to get brought in. Then we have this, uh, this aspartate 13 to alanine here. So that's looking at this uh, this aspartate here. And we see that that's actually important for binding the copper two here. And so if that is, is mutated into alanine, then we do not get this brought in with copper two, but we do with the copper one. All right, so then we can look at these uh, these histidine-rich domains here, uh, and this is looking at fraction of the human CTR1 on the plasma membrane. And so remember, this is uh, generating these endosomes when the copper binds to it. And so we are interested in these ones on the membrane. So how much of it is on the membrane? And so we see we have the basal here then with this lower concentration, higher concentration of copper. We see with the wild type that this is getting brought in uh, right here. But then if we have this delta H1, so deleting this first uh, histidine motif, uh, then this uh, low concentration of copper is not actually getting brought in. Uh, and same with the double deletion here. And so both of those are showing that, uh, that this, uh, at least this, um, this first motif here is important for sort of sensing the copper uh, and being able to actually bring it into the cell. And so this is the actual protein here. This is the CTR1 protein. Uh, and it's kind of hard to see on here. And so I actually have the protein structure here. So this up here is the the methionines these are well they're not the methionines not the ones we were talking about those ones actually were in a disordered region so don't actually show up on this structure here uh, but we have these methionines here which they call the copper selectivity filter and so that is what those methionines there are doing and we can see we have these these coppers in here, uh, in these, well, copper color. And so we have the coppers there. And so we can see that uh, there is this kind of tunnel that goes through down into it. And so that is the ion conduction pore. And so we can see uh, the copper would sort of come in here. We have these methionines here uh, that sort of select for copper. In, uh, so, you know, it, it excludes other metals from going through it and looks just for copper, which can then sort of move through this ion conduction pore, which uh, has sort of this, uh, this charge topology, I guess you could say, right here. Uh, and so, yeah, this is the, the CTR1. So uh, once again, we can look in here. Uh, we actually see that this does bind zincs. So it does actually have zincs, but these seem to play more of a structural role in bringing this homo trimer together here. Uh, and so zinc is used for it, but this is for uh, taking copper into the cell. All right, so the other protein that we have to kind of look at here, we move back up here, is this ATP7A, because that's sort of what's going on on the basal lateral membrane. So the CTR1 is what's going on taking copper in from the lumen. Uh, and so this paper was, uh, this comes from a paper that was actually looking at sort of the crossover of the iron and copper. And so these high iron here, it's uh, proposing that high iron might actually inhibit the CTR1. Uh, but now if we want to look at this ATP7A, 
So we can look down here, so we have ATP7A. So if we have high copper like we have up here, the ATP7A is allowing copper through. If it's low copper, then this adapter protein 2 here is actually binding to the uh, ATP7A uh, and seeming not to sort of allow the copper to move through. And so this ATP7A have has these uh, these domains that sort of uh, every paper uh, kind of agrees on. So this nucleotide binding domain, this autophosphatase, and this phosphorylation domain. And so the reason we have to have those domains is because, as the name suggests, this is an ATP dependent uh, dependent transporter here. And so it requires ATP to actually move the copper ions through it. Uh, this is kind of looking at just another figure of it. Uh, I like this one because it has these metal binding domains. So those are domains like uh, just what it says on the tin. They bind metal, and in this case, it'll be copper. Uh, so once again, this is uh, looking at those three domains for the ATP there. Uh, but then this one I liked because it has this copper channel here. So we can actually see where the copper is sort of moving through here uh, from the intracellular up here. So we have the intracellular uh, or yeah intracellular here and then the extracellular domain there. So it's moving the copper out of the cell and into the bloodstream. Uh, and so this is just looking at kind of the mechanism of it. Uh, the paper goes into a lot of detail about this, but uh, I'm not going to go too much into detail about it. But we can see there's sort of all these different movements going on. We have the ATP binding to it. There are these little movements that can go on. So the copper is moving in here. Uh, we have the copper there, and then the copper can actually move out right here. Uh, we have these more conformational changes going on, and then getting back to our E1 state. Uh, but I do actually have, uh, this is the ATP7A right here, and I have it colored just like they did on this one. So we have the red up here, which is our nucleotide binding domain. Uh, then we have the phosphorylation and autophosphatase uh, domains in, uh, in sort of the blue and the green, respectively. Uh, well, I think this, that one has blue and green. Uh, this one has it in yellow. I was kind of going off this one for the color. And so that autophosphatase domain there is in yellow. Uh, and so this one, uh, so this this part in cyan here, that is that metal binding domain. We can kind of zoom in down here. So these residues I have in magenta are actually uh, the residues in the uh, the channel through which the copper moves. And so if we look back here, uh, so we have the metal binding domain, which they also have here in cyan. Uh, the copper moves through here, and uh, then down near the bottom here, we have like these methionines, which we know from the other protein uh, are very nice for binding copper. Uh, this, uh, this one actually just has a potassium, this purple sphere down there bound to it, uh, but... Uh, that was probably just for the sort of crystallization uh, solution right there. But we can see uh, how uh, the copper would sort of move in here, and then it, it would sort of move between those these two gray alpha helices here, and then can kind of move down through here and out of the cell uh, on there. And so, yeah, that is sort of the two... Uh, main proteins here involved in absorption of copper. Uh, so once again, just to kind of uh, look at this, uh, look at the big picture here, we see that we have the copper uh, is going from copper 2 plus to copper plus from this duodenal cytochrome B here, the same as with our 
iron. Uh, then we have the CTR1, which is bringing these copper ones in uh, and into these endosomes here. And then these can actually pump them out of the endosomes. They can uh, then be chaperoned by the CCS or SOD1 to this uh, this MT here, which is the metallothionine here, uh, which can then store the copper in here, or this uh, Atox-1 can bring it to the Trans-Golgi network here, where it can be stored in there, and then uh, uh, we can have endosomes sort of come off of that and come down here, uh, and then this ATP-7A can actually move the copper then out of the enterocyte and into the blood uh, where then these uh, oxygen here uh, can oxidize the copper from copper one to copper two plus and then this albumin can sort of uh, bring it around the body uh, and another uh, reason i like this image too and this kind of uh, goes back to the the iron video I was doing where I sort of almost forgot to mention that these H pluses are actually needed for bringing the iron in. And so we see that this is a, an iron and, uh, and proton or hydrogen symporter. So it uses the high H plus concentration, low H plus concentration gradient to actually power the DMT one to bring the iron in. And then we have this NHE3, which uh, sort of brings the H pluses back out while bringing sodiums in. Uh, and then over here, we have the sodiums being brought out and the potassiums being brought in. And so uh, I talked a bit in, in an earlier video about these sort of uh, sodium and potassium pumps and so those are used obviously for bringing sodium and potassium into the body because we need those uh, those nutrients but also uh, for you know polarizing these cells because these are uh, just like with neurons they are polarized cells uh, and in fact uh, the papers I read like a lot of times they actually looked at the kinetics using the cell polarization uh, but anyway uh, this is was as I said the video on copper absorption I hope you found it interesting and I will see you in the next video